How's it going, Raiders? My name is Ryan, and this is TRC episode 17. Are you a range DPS? Do you like DPS? Are you interested in range DPS? Well, good news, we are doing our range DPS in Taurus the Burning Throne today. And with that being said, everyone's ready, tanks. Pull timer on you. The heroes have made it to the glorious finale. All right, here we go, guys. Set up new chairs, focus up, let's do this. Okay, so we want to soak the annihilation. Get shit together. And then we want to target the annihilator. Put the girl panties on. Move back to avoid damage from eradication. Uh, I think I've disconnected. Four. Then we target the decimator. Can we pull already? Then we target boss. I hope you can swim in molten lava. Let's kill this dragon. Put your big girl panties on indeed. Joining me today as always is my good friend Martin Lawrence over from the land of Danish bacon and doesn't like potatoes. How are you, Marty? I still don't like bacon. Wait, potatoes. That's how it is, right? What? Yeah. You don't like bacon <laughs> on top of not liking potatoes? What? You're not even human. Sorry. I do. I like bacon, but I don't like potatoes. <laughs> that hasn't changed. Well, despite being confused on whether or not you like bacon, how are you otherwise? I am pretty good. Uh, I'm a little bit hungover though. Uh, I was out partying last night, so yeah. Wait, your birthday was last week. What? You don't get a whole like two weeks for your birthday? I I don't know. It's it was a work thing, all right. So yeah, <laughs> got drunk. <laughs> good for you. Everybody needs to uh, you know turn a good one on every now and then. So as always, guys, my name is Ryan. This is TRC. Today we are talking range DPS in Antorus. Um other than that, real quickly, Marty, what have you been up to in game? Been busy raiding, of course. That's why we're here, right? Yes, sir. But uh, when I've not uh, been, when I've not I been, know raiding, you and I were talking off air. Um, kind of, what's that? I'm just saying when when I when I wasn't when I haven't been raiding, I've actually been playing a a, a, a warrior, a fury warrior. What? Yes. I'm confused. Are you confused? Are you okay? <laughs> Well, it was sitting there and almost level 110, so I thought let's get it up to speed and, and see what it can do. Right on, man. Good for you. Good for you. I uh, I also have been spending time on an alt, um, both in Alpha and Legion, on an assassination rogue, and I'm actually really enjoying it. Um, so I think as we roll into our search for mains, um, he's definitely going to be at the top of my list going into that little project. Um, we will tell you guys more to come as we get closer to those episodes, but for now, this is a little bit of a teaser. Um, as for myself, like Marty, I've been in Raid. We have, I think both you and I, Marty, have been on Imanar pro Progress, have we not? We have indeed. It's one of my favorite fights now, not. <clears throat> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think we got our best attempt was 32%, and I think you said yours was 30%, right? Yeah, I think it was something like that. Maybe, yeah, 28, 30, something like that. Uh, it, it was, um, yeah, we, I mean, we, we survived until the Enrage. Uh, so, I mean, now we just need to speed things up and we should be good. You sh Wait, what platform are you on? The third one? No, second. So you went over the bridge once and you hung out oh, there? Oh, sorry, sorry, third. Yeah, we went to, to, to okay. through the bridge uh, twice. So third, third platform, yeah. So were you guys just taking your, your kind of sweet time getting over the bridges, kind of practicing, just surviving that? Yeah, yeah. We were basically just trying to nail how, how we're going to get uh, over the bridges and just waiting and, and, and yeah, making sure everybody is, uh, is aware of what's going to, to happen. Very cool. Very cool. Um, well, I feel like I should apologize quick for those listening. I will do my best in post-edit to edit out some of the exterior noises going on in my surrounding environment, but unfortunately I've got some construction that I just can't get them to stop making noise. Uh, and due to time constraints with um, EU to over here, um, this is the only time we can record. So for this particular episode, I'm going to apologize if you guys hear any banging or loud noises. I will do my best to edit all that out. Um, but again, sorry. All right, yeah, this is, this is live, real time in post-edit. But yeah, um, joining us today as special guest and honored guest is another fellow raid member of Martin Lawrence's Fred. How are you, Fred? I'm I'm good today, thank you. 
Yeah, man. Well, I'm glad to have you. And then def- definitely have to say thank you for coming on over and being today's guest. Um, as we said before, we are talking range DPS. So in the spirit of time, let's quickly introduce yourself, say who you are, what class you play, how long you've been playing the game and, and what your role in the guild is. Uh, well, my name is Fred. I've been playing since the end of uh, Burning Legion, that is, I think, now. Um, I play Fire Mage, uh, a swap between Fire and Frost, uh, whatever is best for the fight. And yeah, range DPS is what I've been doing. So yeah, that's about it. So you're just a, a general raider. You are not like Chloe or Marty. You don't have any responsibilities other than pew pewing. Is that correct, Fred? Yeah, that that's really correct. I don't have any... Uh, main responsibilities at all <laughs> don't well, stand in fire who... don't stand in fire <laughs> like Marty, he's the one making the fire depending <laughs> on the boss mm. but um yeah i know as someone who's as raid led a guild um and now i'm just a general raider i gotta say there's a lot of benefits to not having any responsibilities other than pressing a few buttons so um very cool haha to you marty but um <laughs> it's, it's oh. <laughs> Running a guild, man. <laughs> Jeez, it's, uh, it's like I mean, herding cats. I'm, I mean, sure. I, I've been, I haven't been done, t- been doing too much lately because I've been really busy with my own life. But, but still, I mean, I, I'm on all the conversations and things like that. And just, just this week again, we had someone who was like, "I really want to go on a break," and I'm like, "Oh, but now we need to recruit, uh, recruit more people." And it's just, oh, when does it end, Ryan? When does it end? It doesn't, man. It's a revolving door and a never-ending story. So, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's definitely another topic we can address in a later episode. <laughs> there's a lot of lot to be said there. Um, but so the purpose of today, guys, like you probably already noticed and heard, um, we're going to be talking range DPS, um, and most specifically in in towards the burning throne. But before we jump into that, I typically like to do a little bit of a rundown and discuss um, just kind of general feelings with our guest. Um, and anybody on the show who might be of that respective role um, throughout this expansion, uh, you know, like this current raid, do we like not like it, do we like past raids, you know, kind of what our overall overarching thoughts are, so to speak. So for today, um, Martin is going to be at a little bit of a disadvantage. He's a healer um, and myself and Fred here are ranged DPS, but um, let's just jump right into it. So I, mean, I guess, Fred, my first question to you is, you know, generally speaking, um, how have you liked being a ranged DPS so far in this expansion? Uh, well, I've been playing ranged DPS since mid Tomb of Sargas, really. Before that, I was a, a Retribution Paladin. So I have a view on sort of both um, aspects. Uh, I think I enjoy ranged a lot more because it gives you a lot more mobility, in my opinion. Um, just in just in general, really, um, if you have to run away for a certain mechanics as um, as a ranged, you can always keep doing stuff. Uh, say for a mage, you can keep casting scorch or something, but as a melee, you just yeah, you just have to run away. Uh, so I feel like this expansion, uh, I enjoyed uh, ranged a lot more so far. Yeah, and I have to say, I generally agree with you there. Um, I've kind of started a, a trend starting with this expansion where I have kind of started playing a specific type of role and I've finished the entire expansion in that role. Um, so for me as a progressive raider, um, I've stayed in the range DPS role. Granted, I've been a different class as a main for each and every tier so far. Um, but yeah, I have to agree with you. It's There's been a lot of fights I've noticed in some of these specific raids that I, I just... I watch the melee um, and the buffoonery that happens with the melee in terms of dealing with mechanics, especially in the in the mythic setting. And it just seems like it's a lot harder for them and they have a lot more to pay attention to and, and less forgiveness, so to speak. They really have to be on the ball compared to the ranged. Um, and like you said, it's it's much easier for us to see things and, and adjust and react to them, whereas they just kind of have to be... Um, I feel like if I were to make a, a comparison, it, they have to be paying attention to their DBM timers a whole lot more than we do because I can see something react, whereas they just need to be reacting before it even happens a lot of times. Um, so for me, I definitely have to say I've been enjoying range GPS as well, this expansion. Um, I, I guess my next question to you, Fred, and, and if you had to pick a specific raid so far, this expansion that you like the most, uh, I guess what would that raid be? Um, I think I actually would go with Antorus. Uh, for this one, uh, there's a lot of fun bosses, 
um, compared to Tomb of Sargras, for example, I didn't really enjoy that uh, so much. Uh, just the setting, for starters. Um, the mechanics in Tomb of Sargras were basically soak everything. Um, so yeah, I think I'm going to go with Aromatoris for this one, also because that's the only two I've actually played as ranged DPS, so I'm not going to uh, go into that for a previous <laughs> race, of course. Yeah. Um, so I actually did the opposite of you. I played Frost and Fire the first two tiers um, in EN and TOV uh, and, and part of Nighthold as well. Uh, and I got to say that I, I'm, I like both those specs. I'm not a big fan of Arcane, um, but just kind of a general question to you. Do you have one of those two specs you prefer more? I'm guessing you're going to say Fire. Uh, that's entirely correct. Yeah, <laughs> I prefer Fire. Um, I was playing Fire um, from the start that I played my mage, and I I kind of had to go with Frost as well because it blatantly performs better on certain bosses, so it would be not smart to just go with Fire blindly on every fight. Uh, but yeah, I will always um, go Fire when I when I can. Yeah. Now, when you're... I guess, are you mainly playing Frost on the purely single target fights? Yeah, that's correct. So for instance, um, I'm guessing, are you playing Fire, though, for, like, Coven? Um, yeah, the potential cleave that you get when the boss gets um, tank swapped um, actually gives that little edge that uh, Frost cannot benefit from, obviously. Uh, sure. So their, their Fire actually... Uh, tends to do quite a lot better. Now, are you, I guess, well, actually, we'll save this topic for once we get into Antorus because I definitely have some questions for you because um, certain range classes have different benefits, and especially that fight. Um, and there's some uniqueness going on with ranged in, in this specific tier, so we'll jump into that um, in a little bit. So now I guess my my last question for you before we really get into Antorus and dive into the, the goodies here, uh, do you have a certain tier... Um, I guess so you've only played the two as range, but if you had to kind of say one that you've hated the most, and just in general, um, I guess what's your least favorite tier this ex this uh, expansion? Uh, just as as in general, you mean like uh, the whole uh, Legion expansion? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think I would go with hmm, Night Hall actually. Really? Uh, yeah. Um. I wasn't really a fan of, of the whole raid at all. Uh, no, it was not my thing at all. Uh, that's <laughs> definitely something I would never do again. Sure. That's funny. Most people, like, I think the majority of people who've been a progressive raider this tier, or this expansion rather, have generally swung in the direction of not liking TOV. Um, but Nighthold, that's okay. That's new to me, but all right. I mean, each <laughs> to their own. <laughs> Marty's giggling over there. Why are you giggling, Marty? Well, well uh, I don't like TOV. And I, I think Nighthawk was one of the better raids. So, yeah. <laughs> well, there, Fred. Meh. Already getting teamed on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I also well, just, I think it also might be something, because you played uh, Melee in, in um, a Nighthawk, right? So. Yeah. And and I was a healer, so obviously we perform very different roles, and so so maybe it's maybe um, it just wasn't like a melee friendly instance. I don't know. I have no clue. I was standing in the back and and running away when everybody else died. So yeah, there's yeah. probably some truth to that. I mean, it's it, there's just such an advantage to being ranged. You can just I mean, just little things like the fact that you are not staring at the boss's nuts, you know, and you can zoom your camera out and see the entire environment around you. It's just that alone makes it a lot nicer, in my opinion. So, but yeah, I could I could definitely see where Marty's right. Maybe there is some little aspect of being a melee that has kind of swayed you away from that particular raid. Uh, but aesthetically, I thought Nighthold was one of the cooler ones, especially um, Augur. You know, that was a really cool fight. But um, that's not why we are here today. So we can you know, maybe table that discussion for a later episode. But um, let's jump into the meat of things here and let's just get right into Antorus and um, we can really discuss some of the goodies here. Um, I guess without further ado, let's start off with Garothi. Um I guess for you, what are your thoughts so far on Garothi right now, Fred? 
Um, in my opinion, it's a pretty straightforward boss. Uh, just sow the things, uh, kill the cannons, nothing much to it, just as long as you have the ability to um, cast while you're moving, I think you'll be in a slight uh, advantage uh, sure. towards other casters. Now, are you playing Fire or Frost for this one? Uh, it'll, it'll depend. On um, Mythic, I'll actually go for Fire, because then I have the ability to use my Scorch Belt. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, from Cleave, um, from the point that you can Cleave, I, there's no DPS loss for me whatsoever, uh, even if you have to double soak um, those bombs. So I think Fire would be the go-to spec there. And I'd have to say I agree with you, and that's that's something that's definitely kind of a, a, a unique situation with jumping from Heroic to Mythic is there are times where certain talents may perform on a class better in the lower difficulties than normal and Heroic, um, and then you may actually want to switch, whereas even though on paper the other spec may perform better, um, just due to the the reality of the mechanics and, and the the encounter itself, it may be better to switch. And like you're saying, um, with normal and heroic, you you don't have to move a whole lot other than just moving out of decimations and obviously running away from the boss if you're low enough health and low enough gear. I think most people who are mythic raiders can can tank the explosion on both normal and heroic now without dying. Um, but you know, frost you can totally stand still a lot in normal and heroic, and so I could see where that would you know definitely. Um, be better DPS than, say, fire. And then in Mythic, like you're saying, there's a lot you have to move for comparatively. So being able to Scorch on the move, whereas Frost, if you don't have any procs, you're kind of screwed. Um, even though you're a mage, you blink and you're good to go. Um, it, it's uh, I, I'm thinking back to when I was playing a mage, and there was definitely times where I noticed stuff like that. Um, and so I could totally see why a fire would, would move it. Um, and damage for mythic but I, my other question to you is like no i play an elemental shaman and mm -hmm. the only reason i haven't gotten to enhance for our guild just so, some of you that might have this question why are you not playing enhance on single target is my guild has a ton of melee and there it, it just would be no point there would be enough range out there to deal with the range mechanics um and plus i compete fairly well on single target damage in my raid so i'm not worried about it but for me my question to you is when I think about myself as the Elemental Shaman, there are certain cooldowns I try and hold or make sure that they are back up in time for a couple of different situations. One of them being when we go into that intermission phase, especially the first one when there's two targets up. I want to save my my Stormkeeper so that I can chain lightning both of them and get a lot of Maelstrom and, and get some damage buffs from that, that regard. Uh, but I also want to make sure that my bigger cooldowns, like Ascendance and my Fire Elements, are back up for Phase 3 um, when we hero now obviously with us been having been on this fight for a long time now we kind of outgear it and there's times where we do enough dps that my cooldowns are not back up for the loss so i recently started not using ascendance and elemental at the start of the fight just because of how much damage we do but i guess for my question for you is are you are you saving your cooldowns and if so what are you saving them for um i just try to avoid uh say using them um for when the the cannons go up um because that would be kind of dps loss so just try to use them when you and you can just fully hit the boss and i always try to line them up with heroes so i, I wouldn't say i say them for a certain point or a certain mechanic um yeah just just make sure that you line them up with um hero um yeah heroism sure so i asked the moral of the story for those listening is is depending on your class and what cooldowns you have available, make sure you're saving them for when you can gain the most benefit from them. Yeah. Um, like he was saying. So uh, like you said, my opinion is Garothi's pretty straightforward. Um, not really much else to say. Obviously, you know, make sure you're doing your soaks, your double soaks in phase three, um, getting out of decimation. Um, and, and my question to you two guys, and I meant to ask you this last recording, Marty, is ranged. Are you guys moving side to side with your decimations or front to back? Side to side. Okay, we'll get a load of this. And if any of you from my guild are listening, um, I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. The strat we are using is we we have markers in front and back, and then the melee is slightly in front of that that front marker. And we basically drop decimations on the back marker, move forward just behind the melee, 
Are you and moving we hang out to, there. Are you moving to the back? So you know how normally where the range was staying, you have a, a left and a right marker, and mm -hmm. you just move back and forth between the two when you drop your decimations, and then outside of that, you don't move until the next round of decimations come up. Yep. Our group has this move three times. We move forward for decimations, and then we move out to go soak the things, and then we go back to that original spot. And it absolutely kills my range DPS. And it, it's just so irritating, even though we've suggested that we use the side to side method, which decreases the amount of movement you have to do almost tenfold, it feels like. Um, I, I just don't understand it. Because for those of you that may be new and may not aware, I've actually recently kind of landed a new mythic home. I've, I've kind of jumped around from a few due to guilds dissipating and whatnot. Um, and so I've actually killed this boss on progression a couple of different times with different groups and different strats. Um, and this particular strat I am hugely not a fan of. Um, and I was just curious if you guys were doing side to side or front to back. But side to side gives makes so much much more sense in my head because front to back, then you your character need to turn around and run backwards because right you you wouldn't want and, to, to backpedal. That's too slow. So that, and you also you don't crowd the melee mm, exactly. Weird. You know, it's, yeah, I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, the response I got when we made suggestions was, this is how we've always done it. We're not going to change it now. It's like, oh, okay. All right. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> if, if it's what people are used to do, and, and I mean, then sure, go for it. Because that's, everybody knows the tactics. And, and I mean, it's the first boss. It, he should be fairly easy. So, st but, right. but yeah. But still, that's a weird tactic. Yeah. Yeah. It's, um... I've noticed with this particular group that I'm attached to at the moment, there have been a lot of strats that have catered to the group rather than asking the group to kind of perform better mechanically. Um, and so we have a few little oddities and nuances throughout different mm. fights in our strats that just kind of don't make sense, but whatever but, they but work. I, but, but I mean, if it works for you, group, I think it's sometimes it's all right to, to, de to right. deviate from the tactics that's out there on the internet. I think that's perfectly all right. Uh, I know that on oh, scenarios back in in those days, uh, the order that that you uh, release the I don't I can't even remember what they're called anymore. But you know you had you had the, each corner that you need to be in yep. at at different times. We actually did a different order than what all the tactics suggested because it actually suited our setup and our guild better. So I mean, do tweaks like that, and if it if it, it it's perfect, all right. As long as you you know get better sure, progress and, 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 and kill the boss and, and stuff like that. And see, and, and those adjustments to strategies, I absolutely one hundred percent understand. If your raid composition, like if you're heavy with one particular thing, that is completely different than what the normal strats call for, and you kind of tailor it to that regard. Like I totally understand that. That makes sense. It's what's going to work best for you. But like a lot of the strats I'm talking about with our group have to do with people who just can't get out of things, who just can't be bothered to pay attention to timers and be where they need to be. So they've adjusted the strat or like holding DPS at certain points because players on ENR still cannot figure out where they need to be at specific times. And so if we don't hold our DPS, she actually kills a bunch of mobs and we don't get credit for them. And it's just like, I, to me, it's like if you're a mythic raider, you should be, you should on some level should be challenging yourself um, or if not holding yourself accountable to be performing better because there are certain reasons certain strats work, right? You know, I, I don't know. If you're if you're still standing in the fire as a mythic raider, then why are you mythic raiding? <laughs> you know? But yeah. I, I think we have a few of those as well. And yeah, let's not dwell, every guild let's does. Not dwell with that. <laughs> <laughs> every guild does. So we could definitely keep going down this rabbit hole. We've gone off on a tangent here. We'll get back on track. So let's talk dogs. Um Again, another weird strat for my group. They had trouble with people and spatial awareness, so they tank the dogs completely far apart that you can't um, keep two target cleave going. Um, so, like, our affliction locks have to run over and put their dots up and run back. Um, if I want to keep flame shock up on two targets, I have to run, and sometimes that's just not super conducive with some of the mechanics in that fight. Um, but that being said, Fred, what are your general thoughts on this fight? Are you a fan? What spec are you running? Uh, I actually use a frost for this on Mythic for the same reason uh, as I would use it on Heroic Rothy at single target since they are spread a lot. Um, 
Yeah, it's um, it's an interesting fight, really. Um, I'm a happy mage when I get to start on uh, the purple dog. Sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, for not having to move a lot. I'm a happy priest um, as well, if I can just stay on purple dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, there's, there's moments where I've wished I was fire. Say, if I would start on the... Uh, purple dog, um, because if I start on the purple, then around 50%, I would go to the fire dog, and that would be way closer to execution range. Again, for the execution, scorch belt would be a lot better, but in general, I would go frost, as I said, for this, um, just because I get a lot more damage out of it, uh, single target wise. Um, as on the purple, also. I think once again you would be in an advantage if you can cast spells that wouldn't be interrupted by movement, considering you get pulled towards the other players every now and then. So that would not interrupt your casts. Uh, then on fire, um, yeah, nothing, nothing special. Same, keep moving. Uh, you would benefit if you can keep casting, say, scorch in my. Um, case if I would be fire uh, otherwise as frost I would just run and not do anything maybe cost ice lands uh, but that's about it really uh, sure yeah and I, I'd have to say for for those of you who arrange DPS um, or interested in DPS one of the thing the biggest things to kind of keep in mind and, and look out for on this particular fight is make sure you know obviously I think most groups and, and you guys can correct me you're probably blown lust right or hero right at the start correct um uh, no, I think we uh we pop it at fifty percent. Really? Right yeah, after the switch? Right? Yeah, I think so. That's we do it at fifty, we know. Don't we? Martin? Uh, Marty? I, 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 I don't really pay attention to to, to <laughs> heroism on that fight because I'm I'm probably busy running away from Fire Dog. Uh, anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we pop it at fifty. Okay. Um, that's new. Uh, I I've never been a part of a group that does it way, but obviously, like we said earlier, that's fine if that what's work for you, that that's what works for your group. Um, but in terms of cooldowns, obviously, in a situation like that, you would definitely want to make sure you hold your big cooldowns if you're not if they're not going to be back up in time for that period of time. Um, but you also want to make sure if you are going to be able to use cooldowns outside of hero on this fight, that you want to make sure you're not about to have to do deal with the mechanic where you're having to move, especially as range. You know, melee and DPS look good on the move, especially in the fire dog. Um, but like for me, I have to make sure that I'm not going to use my sentence when I have to deal with moving around on the fire dog or spreading out and then continually trying to run away from the orb during the purple phase. Um, I want to make sure I can get the most amount of standstill time as I possibly can with minimal movement. Um, so for whatever class you're playing, I would definitely advise, you know, paying attention to your timers and making sure you know exactly when and where you have to move uh, and, and kind of planning your, your cooldowns and stuff around that. And I would um, definitely say that pay, pay attention to the fire dog and the intervals between the the, uh, the the ground effects that you need to move out of that I can't remember the name of right now, because you can actually manage to get, uh, you know, a cast off. Uh, right in in between each of those and and still manage to run out so um, yeah to try and see if you can time that just to you know keep the damage going if if you actually have to if you have a cast time and that's another thing too to to bring up is on the fire dog don't be that person that freaks out once the purple ground effect starts appearing on your screen because you don't actually have to move until the flame stuff starts appearing underneath the screen when you're on the fire dog um, we've had a lot of situations in our group where people just freak out and just start taking off running. Um, and then you have this very long line of fire that you have to traverse through because uh, and, and, you're trying to stay stacked with that group because you want to you know, have as little fire in the ground as possible in the room. Um, and so just try and stay calm and not freak out. But like Marty said, if you're doing it right and timing and stuff, you can get a cast off in between each time you have to move. So um, just pay attention. But um, there's really not much else to that, but I'd say unless you guys have anything you want to add. No, not, not a lot, no. <laughs> cool. Well, we will move on. Um, now, Marty, I know you've told me this before, especially last week when we talked with Chloe, but um, you guys are done with the next three, and I guess it doesn't really matter which order because you are progressed for all three of them on Mythic. So um, let's just move over to we'll do we'll do Enar. Um, 
Now, Fred, you are a class that can have some fun on this fight, I believe. I'm guessing you're playing <laughs> fire. At least I hope you are. Yes, that's very correct. Fire is um, definitely the way to go there. <laughs> so give us a load, man. What are your thoughts as a fire mage on this uh, ENR fight? Uh, as long as you can do a lot of AOE bursts, uh, you're good, actually. You're good, then. Um, also, if you have the trinket from uh, High Command, the Terminus Beacon, you're mm -hmm. very much golden. Um, because of all these stacked things, like, so once again, if you can do a lot of AOE bursts, then it's very good. Um, so I would say Living Bomb is definitely really good there. Um, yeah just uh, go ahead sorry yeah uh cooldown wise just just use it whenever you you feel like you're going to have to face a lot of ads so i unless it's being told by the rate leader to get something done asap i'm going to use my combustion on uh big ad groups um which is obvious, of course, uh, to get the most DPS gain out of it. Um, and that's also one of the bosses where my mythic plus gear set <laughs> goes over my rating set, uh, just for the, the mastery and the legendaries that I wear in that uh, set. Well, it, it's interesting that you say that because that's kind of the situation I'm in with my elemental shaman. Um, and I think some people don't, as I've kind of done Mythic with a few groups now, and I've had opportunities to inspect certain people and just kind of feel things out. Um, I've noticed some people don't quite understand that concept of, especially with AOE, um, depending on your class, there might be a situation where not wearing your four piece or all of your Mythic pieces might actually be a benefit to you on certain fights and certain encounters. Um, like for Malmut Shaman, I only wear two piece and I wear a lot of haste and crit gear versus a lot of my four piece and my crit mastery gear that I would wear on single target. Um, and so I very much am wearing a lot of my mythic plus gear on AOE fights. Um, but I, I had another question for you and, and Chloe said she was raid leading this fight, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping she tailored the fight so that you get to have a little bit of fun. Did she? Uh, <laughs> now the truth is coming out. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it is, it is fun in a way. Uh, I mean, how, how often do you get to blast a, a thousand <laughs> ads into the sky? <laughs> um, it, it definitely is an upgrade from, from the heroic version. At this point, heroic is just not fun anymore it's just really yeah. boring everything that dies just within seconds and it's just as i said not 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 enjoyable anymore uh but but uh, the whole new um mechanic that comes into it that you have to go into the spaceship and go and kill that is i think it's a nice addition because even though it's a bit unforgiving like if, if you don't do it properly the whole rate wipes uh, i think it's a good addition because it it it's not just the heroic version of just kill everything that you come across and you'll you'll get loot. Uh, so I think that's a good addition to that. Sure. Now um, you're probably not on bats very much, are you? Because you don't actually benefit AOE wise from them, especially when they're in the air, do you? Uh, actually, I'm. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, I'm running I, after I just... him as a headless chicken trying to heal him. So <laughs> I, I can confirm he is on bats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I I tried to save my um my combustion for bats as well as much as I can. Of course, uh, we have our warlock on it as well, uh, which is able to slow it down. So then they're all really close together. So again, living bomb combustion mastery stacks is sky high. Um, actually, is really good for bats. Um, even though I know that uh, shadow priests. Are really good on it as well. We, mm -hmm. I don't think we do put them on bats. Um, so now that I'm saying that, uh, I am on bats, but right before the first bat group, um, there's a very big pack on the bottom as well. So it's always, am I going to use my combustion on that for more DPS? Am I going to use it on bats? What should I do? Yeah. So, yeah. 
When you use your combustion on bats, do you wait for them to get to a certain point so that your flame strike can actually hit them? Yeah, I do. Um, I wait for them to come uh, above, not really close to the floor on the uh, the, the first middle platform because my um, dragon breath and flame strike actually mm -hmm. do hit them there. So that's uh, a lot more efficient to use them. So what I tend to do is stay downstairs uh, so I can get uh, living bombs and dragon breath into that big ad pack. And then as soon as um, I was able to use two living bombs and one dragon breath, I know that the bats will be above that platform. So then I go up and I try to do as much damage as I can on them. Very cool. Yeah, because I'm in, I'm in a similar boat with my earthquake. Um, I, I can't really earthquake them until they kind of start rounding that Mm -hmm. um, that one turn um, before they go down the last ramp to the tree in the middle platform because, you know, they have to be closer to the ground from Earthquake to hit them. Otherwise, it's just Chain Lightning Span with Earth Shocks. But, um, yeah, so I, I guess if you had to give any sort of tips to arrange DPS for this fight, what would you say to, to pay attention to? Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, definitely the rate leader, as Marty Mark said. Uh, just just listen to what's going on because it's a it's a big uh, area where you fight and so uh, listen to what's going on listen to your raid uh, save your cooldowns maybe every now and then just uh, in case it's needed um, for like the big the very big ad which I do not remember the name of right now because uh, yeah the yeah, uh, curator so. or whatever yeah yeah that one yeah, um, yeah. Just uh, be clever with your cooldowns and listen very carefully. Yeah. Well, I'd have to. I'd have to say I parallel that sentiment, guys. If you arrange GPO, this goes for anybody on this fight. Um, you know, make sure you're paying attention to your raid or Your timer is where you need to be. If you're not where you need to be right at the the proper time, it's very easy to fall behind, um, and your damage could be lacking. And and part of the fun on this fight is to to go ham. And Just pay attention and listen up. Um, let's move on. We'll, we'll talk. Um, well, I guess I'll let you, Fred. I'll let you decide. Do you want to talk Portal Keeper or High Command next? Uh, let's go to High Command because I am not a fan of Portal Keeper. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, we'll just roll right into it, man. So what are your thoughts? Um, I think a lot of people would uh, think Mages would go fire on that fight, but I... Uh, I've played both, both specs on them, and I have to say I do prefer Frost. Um, even though really? you can't do it. Yes, really. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that might be something interesting indeed. Um, why? Because uh, the bats need to die as soon as possible. Um, our raid was lacking a bit on that, I, I would say. So our raid leader asked me to go frost just to see what happens. And I feel like it went a lot better uh, since I can just... Um, cleave with ice lands when the bats come up uh, and my bat damage was a lot higher than so I think that's a real um, benefit just get the bats down as soon as possible so that the person in the pot don't get murdered sure uh, and then just um, blizzard the hell out of everything while you <laughs> while you yeah frost bolt the boss are you running arctic gale yeah I am Okay, I knew, what legendaries are you using? Uh, the Time Warp ring and mm -hmm. the uh, racers. The okay, so you're running the single target race. ones? Yeah, the, that, that gives you the most benefit, really, because your Iceland is always going to be your biggest damage spell, uh, so you, you always want to keep buffing that. Uh, sure. Even though... There are um, legendaries that would buff your blizzard. It would not be efficient enough, considering there's not adds up 100% of the time. So single target build is actually really beneficial, even how weird it may sound. With the exception of running Arctic Gale over... Um... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, yeah and that, I think it's a good point to bring up, because our, our guild, in both guilds I've progressed with this on this boss wave, um, we've struggled with the bats going down. Um, and there's obviously arguments to be made in, in a lot of different directions. And one of the arguments that came up in our group was 
our top DPS that we had on uh, I had top damage on all of the ads and the boss were typically like myself as an elemental shaman, our affliction locks, um, and, and oddly enough, our feral druid um, in this particular group. In the last group, it was a demon hunter, a frost DK, and a boomkin on, as well as myself. Um, and we had in both groups, we had a lot of hunters um, and some other range classes, but a few of them didn't switch to bats enough or quick enough, and we lacked bat damage. And I think to your point as to why you're why frost mages are really good here is in terms of target swapping frost mages are one of the best range classes to do so because there's really no situation where they have to get a dot rolling or they have to apply a debuff or any of that kind of stuff frost can just switch and it's you know it's pretty much good to go um and and i there's been definitely a lot of times where we've been progressing on this boss and I was like, God, I wish we had a frost mage so I wouldn't have to keep swapping to the bats, especially when they were far enough away from the boss that I couldn't cleave onto the boss in the ads, which is where I really shine as an elemental shaman. Um, but I, I think as a range DPS and a mythic raider, you sometimes you have to make that sacrifice for the betterment of getting the kill. Um, is you know, you're not always there for parses; you're there to get kills and, and be a team player. Yeah, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, that's 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 completely true. Um, say a fire mage would have to um, hard target bats; it wouldn't be efficient at all because the cast time would be way too long. If you're a frost mage, you can just look at your timers and uh, stack uh, your procs to um, blast them all on the bats. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, and then you run into the situation. It's like if you go to cast a pyroblast you may not even get it off before the bats are dead sometimes. So it's like yeah. then you double you double lose on DPS. Um, have you had the pleasure of being in, in the pods at all? Uh, yes, I've been in the first pod, like the second round, and on the uh, the third pod as well uh, to clear the mines. Okay. Yeah, I've only done the third pod and the second pod myself. Um, but I guess we'll we'll stick to our true fashion here, and I think we've kind of done a fairly good job of talking about this boss and stuff. But if you had to give any sort of tips um, for people who are looking to get into range on this fight, what would you say? Uh, definitely um, try to do as much bat damage because that's really key to this fight. Uh, I feel. Um, uh, also, stay spread enough that you do not. Um, trigger these mines or these bombs uh, that you get targeted by so that you um, stun other uh, melee players because uh, that, that happened quite a lot as well. Um, yeah, obviously, especially uh, pay attention to the mines because they can actually spawn yeah. on you. So if you don't pay attention, you, you might yeah. actually just, you know, if you tunnel the, the damage or whatever, then, then you might actually set off a, a bomb by accident. And I think we had a few of those as well. Yeah, that was indeed my last point. Definitely watch your feet. Uh, do not trigger the mines, because um, they will be your death. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I really don't have much else to add onto that other than, again, save your cooldowns when you get the max benefit, you know, depending on what class you're playing and what spec you're playing and what your job duties are on that fight. Um, just kind of pay attention to that kind of stuff. Uh, so we'll move on. I know you're not a big fan of Portal Keeper, but we'll move on to Portal Keeper. So I guess first and foremost, what spec are you playing? Uh, fire. Okay. Now are you going up or are you staying down? I'm on the down team. That's kind of what I figured. I would at least hope yeah. so if you're staying fire. Um, so obviously the biggest thing I think we're going to address here as a range player, especially if you're on the downside, is dealing with the Imps, correct? Yep, that's very correct. So... And I'm guessing, are you not a fan of this fight because of the imps? Yeah, that's about it. The imps are really, if you see that caster go really close and you, you get to counter spell or just interrupt it, and then you just see another imp just cast it anyway, just, oh, oh feels bad, man. Uh, <laughs> it's just, yeah, the imps need to die really fast <laughs> or, yeah, you're gone. So does your group have any sort of like organized CC or imp control going on? I wish I could say, but I, 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 we don't actually. We just try to um, CC and 
interrupt as much as we can and actually um, like single target interrupt them. Uh, but we don't really have a rotation of now I will do my dragon's breath and now you will do that. Now you will do that. Um, I think it would be good if we if we could do that. I guess. Um, but yeah, I, I think the yeah. only thing that we really have and is using is like uh, an AOE grip. Um, yeah. What is it? Is yeah. it the, the demon hunter? Or fiend's grasp? No, it, it's, the, it's a demon hunter grip oh. thingy. Okay. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called, but it's the same principle. It grips them all into one location. Yeah. Okay. So, so I think we use that every time it's up. But but the other ones, we we yeah, just as as Fred said, we we try to just kill them as fast as possible. All yeah, single target, CC, or or interrupt them. Sure. Um, like I know my group in particular. Um, I so we have two fire mages, a feral druid, a boomkin, and myself that stay down as all. And again, I'm elemental shaman. Um, and so the kind of the way we handle it is I typically grab the interrupt on the very first imp that comes out and starts casting so I can get my Cephus rolling. Um, and then from there, we wait until whatever imp, whatever his cast is getting as close as possible to being done, the first fire mage will use his dragon's breath. Um, and then we'll do this for the second set. Once then another imp almost gets done, the second mage will use his dragon's breath. And then from there... Hopefully our blood DKs come back over and, and grip them together or whatever. But then we our, our boom can drop solar beam. Uh, and, and from that point on, it's free for all. Grab single interrupts, stuns, whatever you can do. Um, or like sometimes the boom can and I will use our knockbacks to grab imps that are kind of off in no man's land. Yeah, I actually think last time we did use uh, the boom can uh, solar thingy. But we only have a boom king when when chloe is going dps and and we were try, mm -hmm. trialing some some new healers so so chloe was there as a dps last time so so then we actually had had that uh, to uh, uh, to use that as well sure um and i guess for me the biggest noticeable point thing to point out with with this particular aspect of the fight is a lot of people tend to and this is a concept a lot of people don't understand if, if you wait to interrupt as late as possible, that's actually a benefit in a lot of cases for your group. Um, the quicker you interrupt, like let's say you interrupt the very first imp that comes out and you interrupt it right away. Um, well, he's going to get off more casts throughout the fight. Whereas if you wait, that damage you're doing to the imps and stuff like that, you can actually kill the imps with less cast than you would have had you interrupted early. Um, so trying to just be a bit more controlled and stuff like that in terms of your CC on these imps stuff like that. And obviously the biggest thing that's going to help control imps is if you can grip these imps and everybody can get their AOE rolling, those imps will drop like a rock. Mm. Um, but obviously that's not always the case because sometimes they spread out and it's a bit more difficult. So you have to be a bit more um, cognitive of what imps are where and what they're casting and stuff like that. Um, and so obviously you just kind of have to adjust on the fly. But um, that was one of the bigger struggles, especially for our downside group, was dealing with those imps and making sure no cast get off. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, yeah and, pay and also I don't think we talked about it last week. Actually, uh, everybody who can help out, even healers, should should probably do that. I know holy priests have a, mm -hmm. a single target stun. Uh, paladins has as well. I, I don't really know what monks have, but I think they have something as well. If you can stun them to interrupt their cast, do that. Help help everybody out. Uh, so. Don't don't just be there and don't don't just let the DPS and the tanks handle everything if you can help as well. Sure. Now, have you you? I'm guessing you haven't had the pleasure of going up top yet, Fred, at all. No, never actually. No, me neither. Mm -hmm. I have no clue what they're doing up there. They're probably just sitting there drinking tea or something. I don't know. <laughs> um. Well, what I can tell you guys is for those listening is. Sometimes, especially like for Fred, Fred's in a unique situation where he gets to stay down, but a lot of times groups will utilize classes with mobility, be it mages, demon hunters, rogues, feral troops, whatever, to run um, debuffs from one platform to the next. What I mean by that is the typical rotation in terms of platforms of going up to kill bosses is fire, fell, and then the shadow. Um, but a mythic, each of the platforms has a respective opposite platform that players can go into and pick up a, a, a buff or a debuff rather and bring it back to the platform where the ad is spawned um, and use that buff as it either gets dispelled or drops off of you in such a way to speed up the kill of that ad. Um, and so if you are one of those players going up, the biggest things to look out for is 
you know, barrage may be going off while you're trying to get up to the platform or coming down. So being aware and communicating with the rest of your team on the downside is crucial when coming up or going down and making sure you're paying attention where your feet are getting out of the collapsing world. If you, you know, you, your tank should be doing a good job of paying attention that they're not moving the boss to the place where a collapsing world is going to be when you guys are trying to come down from the, the platform and also communicating, making sure that you are like if collapsing world is about to explode and your group is ready to come down, sometimes it's a benefit for your healers. If everybody just stays up top and hangs out for like five or six seconds, waits for collapsing the world to go off and then everybody comes down so that they don't have more healing to do. Um, and so communication is key and paying attention to where your feet are. Um, and if you are in one of the range going up, make sure you're saving your cooldowns to deal with the ads. Um, and obviously, some groups lost on the, the the green portal. Most groups lost on the the felt uh, shadow portal. Which I'm. Are you guys doing the shadow portal for your hero, Marty? I don't know. I, yeah. I, I I'm I'm just staying down and paying attention okay. to healing. I, I the thing is that uh, there haven't really been a lot of fights where where we are, where the healers actually is is you know uh, that we need the heroism to 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 heal through sure. a phase or something and this so i haven't really i don't really pay attention to to heroism i have to admit uh so i don't i don't know fred do you know because you have that spell uh <laughs> i have that spell that that does the thing that's very right uh yeah i i usually tend to press it when i hear someone shout hero and i think that's around <laughs> that's around the shadow well the okay. the purple platform <laughs> And that would make sense because most groups don't utilize the the buff mechanic with the fell portal. They just go ham on the the fell or the sorry the shadow ad, um, and just destroy it fairly quickly. Which is why most groups utilize the the hero there or the time warp in your case since you are a mage. Um, but yeah, so I, I guess are there any other tips or things you guys would like to mention before we move on to the next boss? Mm, just keep the ads interrupted at all times. Uh, if that if you can't do that properly, you're you're gonna have a fun time at this boss. Um, that's that's the only main main tip I, I would really give for this. Cool. Um, that interruption is definitely more important than your DPS. I think that's definitely a good point to make. So, um, spirit of time, like I said earlier, we'll move on. Let's talk MNR. Now, all three of us are currently on MNR progression. So after we get done with this fight, most of our knowledge is going to be, um, just a disclaimer is going to be from having watched videos or from the heroic perspective. Um, so hopefully with the next episode we do, we'll have one more boss down and we can talk to from firsthand experience. But for now, um, Let's this say will be the two. last first Come on, don't, uh, <laughs> don't downplay it. Two bosses, <laughs> that's the goal, right? <laughs> oh, I'm going to kill Argus, so I don't know about you. But um, yeah, so let's talk MNR. Fred, what are your thoughts here, man? Um, pretty straightforward. As again, um, just uh, keep the... Um, Sleep canisters away from from other people so that you don't put them to sleep, um, and and again watch your feet on the bridges. I think, in my opinion, this is a very fun boss. Uh, I really enjoy this both as frost and fire. Really, I've tried both of them. Um, it's also really fun to just see your tank run in and and just see, watch him kill himself <laughs> on the bridge. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, just just watch your feet. Uh, on the bridges, don't uh, don't put your raid to sleep, and don't push them off with the pulse grenade. Um, <laughs> please, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. But in my opinion, this is this is a very fun boss. Yeah. Now, where are you guys utilizing your hero? Are you still on the progression point where you're using it to get past mechanics, or are you saving it for? Like you would in a kill. Uh, we we used it on the th uh, the third platform, I think. Okay. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, there, Marty. Um, I, I think you're right. I, I think yeah. we're, we're still sort of figuring that out because you know we're yeah. we're still just just practicing getting through the first two bridges. So. Sure. Yeah. Um, but we tend to use it as we would use it in an actual kill. Fight, uh, because obviously I don't personally I don't really see a lot of point in using it just to get past mechanics because you're gonna miss it when you need it uh, some other times but yeah that's something whole like completely different um yeah we use it on the third platform um 
think they're, they're debating between the third and the fourth, actually. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't really have much other to say than um, the name of the game on this fight is pay attention to where you're standing and stay yeah. alive when you're yeah. going across the bridges. Um, and I, I'd give you some advice in terms of each platform, but there's five platforms, arguably. And well, actually, there are because the boss goes over at health, a certain percentage of health. Um, but, you know, the different platform you're on will change where, whether you're stacking, you're spreading out, whatever. But again, just follow your raid leader's advice, but absolutely 100% pay attention to your debuffs and where you are standing. Don't stand in stuff. Don't stand near people if you have a bad debuff. Because like Fred was saying, you're going to knock people off. Um, it, it's just bad. Um, I can't tell you how many wipes we have had when we haven't even gotten to the second platform and because people are blowing each other off the bridges because the people with empowered minds can't be bothered to be patient <laughs> enough to wait for the rest of the group to kind of start going over, you know? No, and I think, yeah. that, I think that's the thing with this with this one. It, it is the patience. Have patience when, you, when you're going to, <laughs> to, to cross that bridge because, yeah. I mean, I, I've, I've had those... What is it? What's it called again? You have that empowered, uh, empowered uh, grenade. Grenade, yeah. So I, I was the run running as the last person to cross the bridge, and and I think I, I was like one third through the bridge when the the boss got interrupted. So in that uh, when that happens, when that happens, then you can run normal speed just across the bridge, mm -hmm. uh, and I managed to get. Uh, as a holy priest who doesn't have too many speed boosts, I'm, I'm, I'm actually managed to get uh, across the bridge without dying. So, I mean, just have patience. Uh, don't kill other players because it can it can actually create like a a chain reaction if you if you um, push someone else into a mine that blows up, uh, and that person is close to other people, and then you have three people stunned. And I mean, it's just not worth it, is it? <laughs> no. <laughs> And that, I guess I, I didn't even think about that, but that is a fantastic point to bring up, Marty, is don't be afraid to interrupt the boss early. Even if you still people have, have people on the bridge, you actually can help them out mm. um, if you interrupt early because you actually have a, I guess, a cushion period of time where the boss won't start doing its respective platform mechanics, um, but he will stop doing the wins and some of the bridge stuff and so players can get across the bridge easier. So, you know, once you have a good chunk of your raid over there, if you even if you still got a lot of people on the bridge or not even started going across the bridge, it might be in your best benefit to interrupt early and, and get going from there. Um, but we'll move on. Uh, I don't really think there's a whole lot else to say. No. Um, I it, guess it, from it's here... It's a crap fight for, for Holy Priest. <laughs> Says the oh, immobile on. holy priest. <laughs> I, th I thought you liked movement, Marty. I love <laughs> movement. <yeah. laughs> I mean, uh, I, I think on so... that fight, I, I think that's when I'm most active in officers chat, just complaining about how shitty this fight is. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's talk Kenny G, Mr. Kingroth. Um, Fred, are you? I'm guessing you're probably going Frost for this one. Um, it's. It's what I feel like playing, really. Okay. Uh, obviously, I, I don't really know the um, mythic aspect of this fight yet, so on Heroic, it's beneficial as Frost to just blast the boss away as a single target mate, uh, Frost Mage. Um, then again, if you're Fire, you get that little moment of cleave that the third ad that's not been damaged yet uh, gets to the boss, so you get a good cleave there. Um, which I think can bring you up to the damage of a Frost Mage. Um, yeah, it, it just depends on what I feel like playing at that moment for uh, Ken Garoth. Sure. Well, and I'd say for me, the name of the game is, is, is killing the adds, right, as they spawn. If you're in a good raid, um, a good chunk of the boss's health, if not the majority of the boss's health, will be gone due to killing the adds. Because for those of you that may not know, when you kill the adds, it, it takes away a chunk of the boss's health. Um, and so being where you need to be. So a couple of things you need to pay attention to. Don't get hit by the orbs that are floating around the room. Let the tanks deal with those. Don't be standing near one of the tanks because when the boss does his little fell crush thing with his hammer, if you're nearby, there's a good chance you could go splat. Uh, and get out of the way of the beam. I don't understand how people... I don't know how hard it is. It's so yeah. funny mm -hmm. when, especially you're looking, uh, looking for raid and you just you just see the boss turn. He's doing his little <laughs> task and people aren't moving. And I'm like... Come on, he's looking right at you. He's going to do the beam. Move, come on. 
I can't tell you times when I've done it on LFR, my guardian druid for fun, and I've popped stampeding roar and watch people still stand there and not get out of the way it's like you have a speed boost you know what i mean like there's a reason somebody just popped it you would think they'd clue into but I, i'm of the opinion people who get caught by mechanics of that are probably watching netflix <laughs> on their second monitor because that's the only time i die to things is when i'm watching netflix on my second monitor yeah that new um, uh, season of jessica jones is, is all right oh i gotta get started on that <laughs> off topic marty sorry <laughs> Um, but yeah, you know, once you get to heroic, you have three ads that spawn each intermission phase. Um, and so most raid groups are going to set it up in a manner where half the raid goes to one location every single time. And the other half, depending on which intermission phase it is, um, will go to one location or the next. But then once you kill your ad, everybody goes to the third location, um, that nobody was assigned to and, and, um, but but kill the ads. Absolutely kill the ads. Pay attention to where you're standing. Get out of the way of the beam. Um, and, and then obviously save your cooldowns and your second pots for – I think most groups are doing it um, in between. Like I know both groups I've done it with on Heroic have done – during progression have done Hero on one of the ad phases, second pots on one of the ad phases, and then personal cooldowns for the, the third ad phase um, because they should be back up by then. And usually if the boss isn't already dead, it should be dead really close to that point or shortly thereafter. Um, but I, I don't really have much else to say. Uh, do you guys want to add anything before we move on? No, that's that's, uh, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's go to Varim Mathras. I think most people, when they do progression, go to Varim before they go to Coven. Um, I like this fight. Uh, some people don't, some people do. What are your thoughts here, Fred? C can I come Can yeah. I come with a guess? Are you, are you going uh, Frost for this? No, but yeah, Frost is... Uh, <laughs> <definitely>. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Frost is unbeatable. Uh, well, from the mages, obviously, uh, in this fight. Uh, pure single target, standing still, is the Frost Dream. And the uh, Holy Priest Dream as well. And the Holy Priest, yeah. Um, I think this boss fight makes a lot of people happy, except for the people that have to run out, of course. Um, yeah. Uh, a lot of standing still, a lot of damage. Yeah, it's uh, it's generally just fun and easy. Well, you don't really even have to worry about mechanics. You can just shimmer out, keep going, yeah. shimmer mm. back in, or shimmer over to the next spot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, I have to run and r jump into raptor form and then wind rush and all this stuff. I'm a void elf now. I can also just stand still and jump over there if I want to. I'm a void elf now. My name is Marty. <laughs> I hate potatoes. <laughs> Uh, Marty, that's sacrilege. Day of all days, St. Patty's Day, and you don't like potatoes. <laughs> you can have uh, mine. All right, More I will. For you. Uh, I'm actually, as soon as we're done recording, I'm actually going to go have me some some Irish food with family and friends and drink some green beer. So, um, but yeah, I, I like this fight. I think, and I might be wrong on this, so don't crucify me, guys. Those of you listening, um, I think there might actually be some ad stuff you have to deal with a mythic. Do you guys know Marty or Fred? I have actually no clue. I have okay. not looked into this yet either. No. No. Well, and I, I only reason I bring it up is this may be another one of the situations if my memory is serving me correct, and I might be completely off and wrong in this regard, but I think there might be a little bit of like blowing up some ads. Um, it might be a situation where frost mages might actually be outperformed by fire mages on mythic. I don't know. I'd have to look. Like I said, our group isn't there on mythic progression, and neither are Fred or Marty. Um, but. Biggest tips I can say, guys, for normal to heroic and Fred and Marty step in if you have anything to add or I'm off on anything is stay with your group, move over when the debuffs drop on the ground. Um, and if you have the single debuff that it targets one person in the raid, the name is escaping right now, make sure you're at least 10 yards away from the rest of the group and stay there until your debuff goes off before you come back into the raid group because that one person that's like nine and a half yards away is going to wipe your raid group. And there is an uh, amazing weak aura for that. Um, I, yes, there is. Yes. So I don't know. Maybe we could chuck that in the show notes because uh, it's it's really good. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it I guess that's a good point. If you guys are listening and you guys want to know what kind of weak auras or any stuff we're using, by all means, email in the show. Uh, links are always in the show notes and we'll say them at the end of the show. And, and we'll start including that stuff in the show notes for you guys. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, other than that, do you guys have anything else to add before we move on to Coven? No, let's go. Cool. Yep. Coven it is. Uh, Frost or fire here, Fred. Go. Coven, fire. All right. <laughs> um, 
I guess you're going to be better suited to talking about this fight than I am because I, my tanks don't tank these guys close enough for me to have fun like a lot of the elemental shamans. But um, what are your thoughts here? Um, it's just rather straightforward again. Um, just why fire would benefit from this is on the uh, the tank swap. Uh, they're just close enough um, for a long period. Well, not long, but long enough for the ignite to spread. So if you can build up a good ignite debuff on one of them, it'll eventually get on the second one as well. Um, so that's that's what really gives the edge to the fire there. Uh, other than that, um, on the storms, make sure you blink into a uh, safe circle. <laughs> um, yeah. And um, avoid every other um, of these, what are they called? People. Yeah, uh, so the... Yeah, the wall, the wall of ads. You'll yeah. have the four the four sides of the room will be a wall of ads. They start walking towards the center, and you can see see them knock them back, slow them, whatever. Um, most groups will do something to create a gap in one of the walls that you can run through. Um, but if the circle that surrounds the ad touches you, you are dead pretty much. Yeah. Um, so avoid that. Like Fred said, blink into a safe zone during storm during the fire ads. Um, they will have a chain or line of fire from them to the center of the room, and there's like eight or six or eight of them i think somewhere something like that like i think it's basically like a pizza around the room um yeah. <laughs> if you touch one of those flame lines you again you're pretty much dead so during the flame ones make sure to the outer edge of the room um and, and kill the ads the i think most groups are hero heroine or time warping or lusting depending on um, your group during the healing ads there's four ads that spawn around the room um, you have so much time between when you've killed one and the next one where the next one will heal or any of the ads that will have to heal. Um, so most groups will hero because typically if you have a good DPS, you can get two or three of the ads down, if not all four of them, before they heal. Um, so, yeah, just avoiding stuff, making pay, paying attention to where you're standing. Um, during the storm phase, not the storm, but the chain lightning phase, one of the bosses will throw chain lightning out on the raid group. If you're within two yards of anybody, you will chain the damage onto them, and it hurts. So be aware of that. Um, if you have a good raid leader, this fight's pretty trivial because they're calling out stuff before it happens, so you can kind of know when to move. And if you have DBM and patience, your timers, you're, you're pretty much good to go there too. Um, but for those of you that are dot range classes, congratulations. You you have won, <laughs> won the prize on this fight. Um, yeah. So I guess Boomkin, Shadow Priest, and, and Warlock Affliction Locks. Uh, congrats, you big jerks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, I don't really have anything else to say for this fight. Do you guys? No, uh, no, not set. I guess I guess the last thing I would leave you guys with: um, if you're on progression kills and you're not trying to go for parses and fun, save your cooldowns for ads. Get through those mechanics quickly. Um, and, and, and make sure your group is coordinating CC on the, the walled ads so you're moving through them without dying. Um, but let's move on. Let's go talk um, second to last boss, Mr. Agrimar. Uh, I like this fight. I really, I always do. I, I think there's, it's the pace in terms of which the, the phases change and, and the different things you got going on are, to me are a little bit more in line with like the old end bosses you would see from the Burning Crusade. But, you know, there's just a lot going on, and people have different roles and, and stuff like that. So I like this fight. Um, what are your thoughts here, Fred? Uh, I, I really do like it as well. Um, even though the majority of the mages would spec frost there, I really prefer fire again. Um, just for the, the cleave on the, um, the the two big ads that show mm -hmm. up at some point. Um, I, I don't know how frost mages would out damage a fire mage, but they, they do apparently. <laughs> uh yeah um other than that just uh, uh yeah <laughs> with the pulsing damage they stay spread um well do we have uh the the big smash from the boss soak it with the blank yeah that or whatever flame you know whatever it is yeah the the big smash let's call it that <laughs> um and um these big circles that show up and explode, um, yeah, you want to move out of those as fast as possible. <laughs> uh, because there's there's been a few too many times where I thought, I can get this cast, no, you can't. Um, and then you die horribly. Um, so don't think you can get your cast off and then move out. Um, yeah. Especially if you're a mage. It. 
Yeah. <laughs> Just shimmer out. Yeah. Um, I, will, I I try to move like on every boss. I will try to move us like lo, like not a lot. I will barely actually run around. I will always try to utilize my blink as much as possible. So chances of my blink being on cooldown is very uh very big. <laughs> sure. Um, I, most groups that are progressing in this fight will typically use hero in the second intermission phase. Uh, I'm guessing that's where you guys did yours too. Um, yes, most I think likely. so. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, just and, not and go with it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys can't see them, but they are nodding. Um, I can't even see them. I just know they're nodding. But um, yeah. So the reason for that is during the intermission phase, there's a lot of raid damage that goes out. Um, especially on the higher difficulties, there's a lot of other mechanics you have to deal with. Um, until you can get those two big ads down, the boss is immune and all that raid-wide damage and stuff is going on. So the quicker you can get out of that, the better off you're going to be for your healers. Um, so if for range DPS, again, like Fred said, make sure you're you're staying with the you're spreading out when you need to, not standing in the big circles of fire. You're stacking when the boss does a smash with the rest of the raid group, um, and then obviously saving your CDs uh, or making sure they're back up and saved for that that the uh, second intermission phase going into the last phase, so you can get through that as quickly as possible. But I don't have anything else to add on this fight. Do you guys? No. Nope. Let's talk, Me, yes, Mr. Uh, DPSing healer. I have nothing to add. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Just spam prayer of healing, Marty. <laughs> um, Go oom as fast as start. possible. Right. <laughs> um, let's talk Argus. You know, I'm. This fight makes me sad. I'm like you, Marty. I always wished it was going to be actually Sardaris, but um, it wasn't. But this is not a lord. A podcast, so I know I'm just still sad, <laughs> it's dumb. Uh, either way, all right. So, Fred, thoughts here, man. Frost fire, what do you like? What do you don't like? Uh, fire actually, but that's mainly because of our rate group. Uh, we on well, we only have a other one other fire mage which mainly plays frost as well. So, on the, the ads that are vulnerable to specific damage um i usually get the fire one all to myself so i could I just get to go ham on that on my own and it's, it's a massive dps gain because it's it usually stays up the longest uh, yeah uh, that's that's why i tend to go fire on that one uh other than that uh the first phase is pretty easy being a mage because the the cone that he casts is just large enough for you to blink and to be exactly next to it so you can just Keep casting and blink. Um, oh. Cooldown wise, you can just just use it whenever. Uh, just make sure that you will have your cooldown available when the uh, the vulnerable ads show up, because you you definitely want to use them there as much yeah. as possible. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say I express the same sentiments as an elemental shaman. Um, stay stack with the group. Phase one, if you have Soul Blight, run behind the group to drop it. If you have the two debuffs that will drop the buffs for the rest of the raid group, drop them directly to the side of the group or in the group. Just don't drop them on top of each other. Um, and if you are going to drop them to the side, drop them on the side that people are going to be moving towards when they're getting out of the Death Cone thing. Um, and obviously the second phase before the adds, if you have Soul Bomb, go to the marker where the tank is going to be. If you have the Soul Blight or whatever it is, again, make sure you're running out of the group max range and using a personal cooldown to keep yourself alive. Um, and add phase, obviously, save your cooldowns and find your vulnerable target and, and have fun because it is crazy numbers you can get. Um, and then the last phase, don't stand this stuff. Get your bombs out, again, like in phase two. And I, please, for the love of God, if you can help it, don't touch the ads when you're resing and pull the raid <laughs> off of the place. Uh, I get, there's so many times I've watched people like right out of the gate. Like there's a mob right next to the port where you res and they just run right into it. It's like, oh my gosh, here goes everybody blown all over the place. But um, you like this fight, Fred? Uh, yeah, I, I do. Um, apart from, I would say the the last phase because i tend to t 
tunnel the boss a bit too much and I can really <laughs> suggest you to focus the ass because if you don't, your rate leaders will shout at you. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but other than that, uh, I think this is a really fun fight and unique fight with the dying and not dying part. Um, yeah, it's, it's general fun, I would say. So the ads you're speaking of, you're talking about the orbs? Yeah, the orbs. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, I would have to definitely say, yep, I've been yelled at a few times because I've gotten <laughs> tunnel visioned. Um, but yeah, no, I like this fight too. So um, I guess one last question before we kind of close things out for the day. If you had to pick a certain fight in Antwerp that you like the most, and one that you dislike the most, what would they be? Ooh, that's a difficult question. <laughs> well, Portal um, Keeper is probably the one that you hate the most, right? Yeah, that's uh, <laughs> definitely my my hateful boss. Um, and the boss that I would like the most, hmm, I would probably say either High Command uh, or Imonar if it would be Mythic. Uh, and then just Heroic-wise, I think Argus... Uh, is also at my top. Very, very cool. Well, I, I got to say we're... Go ahead, Marty. I have like one general tip before we, we get out of here. Something that I noticed sure. on, on our last like a few Immunar um, progression rates, and that is that when you're doing an encounter, try and and be like in the same area every time. Because I've noticed sometimes mm. that we have mm -hmm. a few people who every every try they're, they're in different positions, and especially on Imona, where it's important that you are like a, a certain have a certain distance to people when you get dispelled. It's so frustrating when all of a sudden you you have a have a person standing in your range that usually doesn't usually isn't there. Um, so so when you have these progression rates where you're just uh, are trying out and you keep wiping, try and do the same things, be in the same positions. Obviously, if you need to adjust tactics, do that. But but overall, try and do the same things. So other other people know that uh, what they're doing, that they're actually in the right uh, in the place that where they're safe and things like that. Absolutely, I think that's definitely a good tip to bring up. So, um, if you guys don't have anything else, we will close it out. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Yep. Cool. All right. There you go. You guys have it. Well, Fred, thank you very much, man, for coming on. It's been a fun episode. Um, I actually got to put in a lot more input than normal because I am a ranged GPS myself. Um, and Marty got to kind of sit back and eat his bacon and not eat potatoes on mm. potato day. So um, that being said, guys, as always, you know, thank you for listening. We have really much enjoy these shows and, and, and look forward to doing them each and every time. Um, but other than that, Marty, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you in and out of the game? Uh, in the game, you can find me on Stormrage, I guess, on the EU side, uh, Alliance side, uh, where my character is called Unamethel. Out of game, you can find me on Twitter, also at Unamethel. If you like to listen to podcasting and uh, you maybe have an interest in all the Blizzard games, you can find me at the blue recluse.eu. It's a podcast about everything Blizzard. Likewise. Yeah, man, that's that's cool. Definitely go check it out, guys. Um, they have a lot of fun over there. I can definitely say as a person who's been a guest on his show a few times, it's a lot of fun. Uh, and they're now doing live episodes, which is really fun. So go check it out. Um, Fred, I'm guessing you don't have any really social media links or anything? No, there? no, I'm uh, very antisocial. No, not really. Don't. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't have anything to mention, really. Um, well, we weren't going to mention this, but this is part of Fred's three-step program to becoming less antisocial. He's come on a show <laughs> that he can get out there. But um, as for myself, guys, you can find me on my Blizzard Games podcast I do with my good friend Dusty Porter, the Blizzard Umbrella. Or you can find me, obviously, here at the Raiders Confessional. Uh, if you want to get a hold of us here on the show, guys, you can find us at our Twitter account, which is at underscore TRC podcast. Or you can get a hold of us at our email account, the Raiders Confessional at gmail.com. There's no apostrophe on the S. Uh, ask us questions, guys. Make suggestions. Say hello. Whatever. Just you know, we'd love to hear from you guys. So reach on out and and do that way. Yeah. Uh, but for me personally, you can find me on Twitch and Twitter at McIrish Gaming. But other than that, guys, it's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. Thanks again to Fred. Uh, and that's gonna be it for us. So with that being said, Dusty, take us out of here. Sorry, I died. <laughs> <laughs>
was I supposed to stand in the green puddles or the orange ones? <laughs> hey, get together over there, bud. This show has been hosted by Dragon Powered Studios, and the intro and outro has been brought to you by Thankful Cow Solutions. Moo. <laughs>